Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of InstaBlinks. Today we're going to be talking about an open source software that was developed by Uber called Cadence. So this software is a workflow engine that looks to simplify the process of developing and running process-driven business logic at the highest levels of scale and reliability. Uh, now, to, to add some meat to the bones, I've got a very special guest to join us, Ben Slater, who is the Chief Product Officer of InstaCluster. Ben, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great to have a chat. Absolutely. So, Ben, we'll dive right into this. First of all, can you kick us off with telling us about what exactly Cadence is, where it came from, and maybe some of the key challenges that the technology is looking to solve? Yeah, so Cadence, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, piece of software um, that, uh, as you mentioned in the intro, uh, was originally developed by Uber. It's basically, you know, in software development, there is very commonly, you know, requirements to, to do multiple tasks sequentially, perhaps with a bit of logic about, you know, do this task, uh, to, you know, do a diff to have a choice depending on, you know, what the, the state of the work workflow is and, and generally called workflow. Um, what makes and workflow engines have been around for a really long, long time, but what makes Cadence different is firstly, it's designed as a tool for programmers. So you develop Cadence workflows actually in uh, Java, Go, Python, Python code. And secondly, it's designed to work at uber scale, basically uh, at very, very high levels of scale, thousands, millions of, of concurrent uh, workflows needing to be executed and to do that you know extremely reliably and it's based it, it itself is open source it was open source by uber a, a few years ago under a patchy license uh, and it uh, underlying it is a number of pieces of open source software that you know, provide database services and those kind of things to help it run so in your view what what i guess are the big challenges that uh, Cadence is looking to solve at the end of the day the, the big benefit of Cadence is less effort and less time to develop things in this case because it's taking a lot of things that if you custom build them you have to you have to build sort of infrastructure type code to deal with server failover to do with um, pausing workflows and saving them to to re uh, start them in a you know week's time or even an hours an hours time so a lot of that kind of stuff is taken care for you so you get a lot of a lot of efficiency benefits in, in writing code uh, using that it gives you a really good framework to do that too which actually can save a lot of time to just have a lot a nice logical framework that your code has to, to fit into and a way of thinking about these things but it's also very well suited to the modern organization where you know developers are working very closely with you know, maybe product managers or those kind of people and and you actually want to express those workflows in code because I'm, as compared to some of the older style workflow engines where it was designed for business analysts to use and they would express workflows in, in business analysts to avoid having to talk to the programmers. And that's kind of not the world that we live in anymore. You know, the, the pro programmers in modern organisations work very closely with the business and with a little bit of product management in there. And so it's it's designed to empower those people to really get things done quickly and, and deliver, deliver um, services that are extremely scalable and extremely reliable. Fantastic. Thanks, Ben. So, so from, from my understanding, the Cadence really serves longer standing workflows across, you know, multiple business units. So by, by its very nature, I guess there's, there's a fair bit of complexity behind the scenes in terms of integrating it with different applications. What, what are some of the key challenges when an organization's looking to deploy Cadence in, in production? Yeah, I mean, one of the good things about Cadence is it's it's really easy to, to get started giving it a go. You can download a Docker image uh, onto your laptop and start building and running Cadence workflows. And, and so it's it's really good from that point of view. Uh, however, when you come to actually then run that at production scale, um, Cadence itself is, is one service, but it requires uh, to support it a, you know, a database and Apache Cassandra or Postgres are both databases that, that Cadence can use and some others as well. Um, for some features, you need Kafka and you need um, uh, OpenSearch or, or Elasticsearch. Um, so that then becomes quite a complex operations environment that you have to build and, and configure and, and those kind of things. And to run Cadence and have it as a robust service, you also need to be able to un run those underlying services as a robust um, service. So um, like a lot of things, the, the, the move from from dev to actually a full operational environment can be can be a, a bit of a challenge um, there there's quite a lot to get right to, to really do a good job of cadence 
So in terms of, I guess, dealing with this complexity, what tips would you have for people looking to implement Cadence uh, within their organization? I think the first thing is is you know, making sure you, your organization is going to get value out of Cadence. And to me, that either means you've got quite a few workflow type requirements that you're going to want to implement it. If it's one simple requirement, then probably the overhead of all that is not going to make it worth learning cadence either from a dev point of view or an operational point of view um mm -hmm. so you know, lots of lots of requirements that that means that you can get that investment or if it's one requirement with a high scalability and high reliability requirement might be enough to make cadence worthwhile of course the insta cluster we are launching our cadence managed platform offering um that's all about helping people get over that that hurdle of, of how do i build and operate uh this thing um mm -hmm. reliably so um, certainly, you know, considering that if you're new to Cadence can, could help you, you know, really get, get moving quickly with the technology and start to get the benefits as soon as possible. Fantastic. So can you, can we just linger on that a little bit? Can you talk us uh, about this new Cadence offering within Cluster? What does it actually involve? And I guess what, what does the, the deployment look like for customers that are, that are looking to, to deploy this? Yeah, well, I mentioned, mentioned earlier that, um, you know, Cadence requires something like Apache Cassandra, Kafka and, and OpenSearch to be able to then start running Cadence. Obviously, those are things that are all already in InstaCluster's basket as things that we offer and we have really great experience in how to run those things in production uh, very reliably. So that was certainly one of the things that attracted us to Cadence as a, as a potential offering. We're building on that base um, and are able to run Cadence across those. So our um, Cadence offering allows you to provision all, all of those uh, things. Um, it will uh, actually allow you to sort of fill out a single form and get all of those things provisioned and, and running um, for your cadence. Has full monitoring and SLAs around it, uh, monitored by our, our tech ops team who are able to respond and help with any issues and, and full support for that entire open source stack. Um, you know, as you have issues in there, um, our, our team will be able to help you to get those resolved. That's fantastic. And and so that the same applies for both the underlying data layer software layer. So Cassandra, Kafka, as well as Cadence uh, as a sort of absolutely the entire stack and the and the integrated picture of the stack. So there's no pointing at uh, anybody else saying this is their problem. It's it's all our problem and we will we'll get it fixed. Yeah, I can see how it, it absolutely aligns to InstaCluster's vision around around true open source and and the power that it can have when it's when it's managed and, and deployed correctly. And so, so Ben, I guess changing gears a little bit, um, you know, Cadence, like any other software, uh, you know, exists in a, in a competitive environment. Um, and, you know, one of the, the other key technologies in this space is, is temporal.io. So can you talk to us a little bit about how Cadence is, is different from, from temporal? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting picture. And we did spend quite a bit of time looking at that um, before deciding to to go down uh, the path of of having a cadence offering and understanding what's going on there in the sort of open source world. So Temporal is a fork of cadence made by a company that's called <laughs> called Temporal. Uh, so at the moment they're they're relatively similar technically. They will probably diverge over time because it is a it is a fork. Um, so they're not necessarily going to be kept in sync, although we do see a bit of features going back and forwards between them. For me, you know the big difference is um, temporal, the product, the open source project, is entirely owned and controlled by Temporal, the company. And Temporal, the company, uh, is a commercial company looking to make money by selling mm -hmm. Temporal licenses and particularly by developing a SaaS platform. So they, they, you know, their interests are not necessarily completely aligned with, with people who want to use Temporal, um, the, uh, like any other environment where you, you're using licensed software. On the other hand, Cadence is still owned and, and controlled by, by Uber. Uh, who have made some pretty strong commitments in the last uh, few months that they will continue to operate Cadence as an open source project with a community around it and, and uh, you know, look to move to open governance models. Uh, and you know, their, their incentive is to, it's used very, very heavily at Uber as a core part of their architecture. So their incentive is, is to make it mm. the best software it can be for them to use and, and for others to use uh, as a result. So um, we, you know, we are big believers in the power of, of open source and open source community and InstaCluster and we've operated in many communities and seen that power. And, and we really think that um, you know, Cadence is the one that will be able to harness that power and over time. Yeah, be shown to be the, the better option. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that you know workflow engines have been around for a long time. 
when we're looking at the different tools in the market, I guess what are the what are the key considerations that would make Cadence a good fit for an organization as opposed to some of the other other uh, options out there? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the number one one is that is that scale and reliability requirement. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's really designed for operating at scale. I think the other thing to look closely at is um, do you want your developers to be maintaining your workflow code or are you looking for more traditional business analyst type people to be maintaining your workflow definitions in you know a, a pseudo code language or in diagrams or those kind of things uh, you know if you if you are looking for something that allows your your business analyst type people to do it then that's not something that Caden provides um, it's sort of possible to build that on top of Cadence but it's not not there out of the box um, but if you're looking for your, on the flip side, if you're looking for your developers to do that, then they're probably going to be more comfortable and more productive working in the, the development languages that they know than working in one of those pseudo uh, programming type languages. And they certainly have a lot more flexibility in what they can do uh, working in a true a true programming language. So I think they're, they're really the key things if you're looking at Cadence versus other, other workflow engines. Now, I, I guess Cadence as a, as a software is, is still emerging and you know, getting your, your hands on, on good resources for technical enablement is always a thing that you know, a lot of our people in our community want, want to know more. So are, are there any spots that you would, you would point people towards in, in terms of getting you know, good content about, about Cadence? Caden, CadenceWorkflow.io is the main Cadence project website. Um, has quite, quite a lot of good content on there. In particular, I found very useful when I was getting my head around it. There's um, you know, sample applications that you can just download and, and run a script and they're, they're up and running against that, that Docker image and then you can start playing around with those. Uh, that also has a link to the Cadence Slack community, I guess, which again, you can drop in there and, and ask support questions and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. As part of as part of building up our, our Cadence offering in Instacluster, we're also starting to publish you know, a lot of Cadence content as well, which will be available on instacloster.com in our, in our blog. So starting to get a fair bit of interesting stuff out there. Well, Ben, thank you very much for joining us. I think we've we've given a good high level summary of, of Cadence and, and where it exists in the overall competitive landscape and, and where it would be a good fit. So thank you so much for uh, you know sharing some of your time today. And yeah, we'll look forward to getting you back shortly. Thank you. Great to chat as always.